Hi everyone, my name is Della Phillips. I'm an artist, among other things, as well as I'm known as the Bicycle Lady. How are you doing today? Well, I'm going to have to apologize. I did try to film the video of me cutting open the recent book delivery I just received. Unfortunately, we had a cam camera issue, so I'll show you what I got. It's already been opened. So I'm, I'm kind of excited by this. Let me get these out so you can see them better. A while I got. I originally was not going to order, but I saw these on sale at such a good sale that I just couldn't resist. So let me get these all out and so you can see it. Okay? Hopefully you can see everything. Let me just move it this way and we'll, we'll go through this. Okay? Okay, I'm back. I was just double checking the camera to make sure we wouldn't have an issue. What I have here, first of all, are some blades. I do have a very basic Logan mat cutter. And I really don't use it to cut mats. I mainly use it to cut paper and also like the two-ply uh, museum, rising museum board that I love working on with the color pencils. So I wanted to get a few more blades to have on hand. So that's what this is. I'm going to set this over to the side here. Now, I'm going to leave these for last. I'm pretty excited by these. And I'll explain further. What this is, let's see, I have a feeling it's the one tube of watercolor I wanted to get. And it's from Ingram that complements my other. And yes, it is. Is Chinese white. Now, Chinese white is not totally opaque. If you wanted a totally opaque, you want to get the titanium. I want to use this for mixing pastels, essentially. So it's not so much to put whites back in. Many people will use gouache for that. Um, this definitely is used for mixing. So, that's what I got this for. I'm going to set this over to this side. I don't think you need to see this cloth. Now this here I've looked at for a long time. Uh, as you can see, it's a brush holder. And what's great is that it holds the brushes straight up and down. So when you've washed them and they're wet, you hold them straight up and down. There's no way that water will travel back into the ferrule and cause it to swell and uh, possibly become loose. So that's a great thing. I've been looking at this and him hauling back and I just finding it. I'm going to get it because I started back to watercoloring. These are the Windsor Newton watercolor markers. They're not refillable. Usually they run between six, around six bucks. Look at them on sale for $3.88. And another vendor had them on sale for $3.77. I said, hey, Blick, you say you price match. Will you price match these? They said yes. So I got them. Now, I do have some prior ones. Uh, I'll pull out into a full swatching. But let's open a few of these. Open this up and see what I got. Okay. okay. Now, before we get to swatching, what I'm going to show you is this. Remember I had that that box I was pretty excited about. It was from Masterson's. What it is, it's a drying station. It's not really a brush storage. And I think it's great. I went back and forth a long time on it. And I know other YouTubers have shown this in them several years ago or so. But with the price that Blick had on it, I, I just couldn't uh, not get it. I believe it's very, very justified because will save your brushes. When you wash them, you can store them while they dry straight up and down. That way water cannot wick back into the ferrule and cause the wood handle to swell and basically come loose and your brush is no good. So this is fantastic. I just turned it on the side since I have the camera above. So you can see it as if you're looking from the side. And I do highly recommend it. It's just very simple assembly. You have these two posts and this and this. They all snap together. It takes less than a minute. And I'm setting up my own little drying wash station. 
and I'm very excited now to really treat my brushes very nicely in the right way of drying them. Okay, now let's get on to the next, which will be the swatching of the markers, watercolor markers. All right, I'm back. Uh, got all the markers out from Bullock Order and the ones in cellophane are now out. And let's get ready to swatch. What I'm going to be using is a piece of the Legion 100% cotton multimedia paper. Now, I've already tried that once before and it does allow you to put the marker directly onto the paper and still be able to disperse it out. That doesn't necessarily mean that will be the case on all the papers. Especially the Legion watercolor paper. Legion watercolor paper seems a bit soft. When I did it on there, it sunk right in and would not disperse. You'll find that also with possibly some other watercolor paper. Normally, uh, the ones with the heavier sizing does work well. Possibly in a future video, we might explore that further. I'll gather up some paper samples and uh, we'll give it a go and see what works and what doesn't. I do happen to know that the Hannah Mueller 100% watercolor paper pad, that's 140 pound Copra, does work great. As well, of course, uh, the arch or arches, however you want to pronounce it, uh, along with a few of the others. But uh, we'll explore that more possibly in another video. Let's get swatching. Okay, first up, uh, I wrote down all the names. And let's go ahead and start with a gaboge, or gamboge, however you want to pronounce it. And let's use both ends. And I'm going to go ahead and put a line down here. Because I'm going to give it some time, and we'll see if that will uh, also spread out. And i got my water brush here. And let's see. Oh, nice. Look how nice it went in. And let's see. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Okay, let's wash that off. Wipe it off onto a paper towel. That we have here. Alright. Now, the next one. Sure, all the caps are on good. I set my water brush cap over there. And oh, the water brush I'm using is the Derwent with the push button. Let's see. This one should be Permit Rose. Let's make sure. I need to mix up. Nope, it's Permit Rose. Let's use the bullet tips. And let's use the brush cap. I'm going to put an extra line a little further down this time. Okay. see. Wow, that's pretty good. There's a slight haze. But overall, look, I mean, if I work it a little more, I'm sure it will all go into. Oh, I'll say that's pretty good success. All right. Now, let's try Elizabeth Crimson. If you go out and you uh, do some quick sketches of flowers, roses, uh, these two would be a great complement to each other to use. I'm happy with that. Okay, now, bring off the water brush. Let's look at this one. Mid blue. Mid blue, I know, will definitely lose the lines. I've tried it with other papers, as uh, well as watercolor papers. It seems like in any of the papers, it will just sink in. But we'll go ahead and swatch it out anyway. 
That's why I'm getting kind of excited to play around with these more. Now, when you're in a situation where when you direct apply to the paper and it doesn't spread out and you don't want that in your painting, you can do what's called palleting first. Uh, whereas with like a, uh, you can use a ceramic palette or a plastic palette. And what happens is, yeah, you did a little better than I expected. Um, you don't put the, the full strength color onto the paper. Instead, you make your dilution and put it on just like you would with a normal watercolor. And then you can come back and dilute it further. And that works great. But I like the idea of having the markers. And let's say you're out and about. Now, granted, if you have the full collection, it's 36 markers. But if you're out and about, you don't have to take the time uh, pre-wetting your palette and getting the colors juicy and so forth. You just pull out your uh, marker and go for it. I mean, you don't even have to draw it. You draw it with the marker and then uh, spread it out when you can do the direct dilution on the paper method. So, I, I believe we're going to be looking at a bunch of paper if I can get my hands on the samples. See what happened here? Look at that. That whole line is gone. See? Just a haze. Slight haze. And that could be good. Like you could, um, I forgot to put a mark on this. Here. Let's say you're out and about, you're doing a petal, and you want to find a line anyway. You can use this property where it just leaves a, a slight haze as you're at defining edge possibly and dilute and do it that way show separation of petals so i like this i like this a lot i'm very happy that it's working on multimedia legion paper because i just uh, put together a, a little five by seven landscape sketchbook that I made myself. Oh, this is very nice. Look at how nicely that goes into dilution and being able to make a gradient. That is so great. Look at that. Look at that. So, being and this is the line there. All right. Next is the phthalo green, and here's the brush, and here's the bullet. Now these are non-refillable. That doesn't really bother me, because I had some to put away for some time, and I'm just now coming back to revisit. That is still nice and juicy and usable. So they seem to be full of a lot of color and solution. They are a felt center type marker. Since so they're not coming out with cartridge type style markers. But those are still dye based as far as I know. These are pigment based. And they are a light fast rating. Something like what? Windsor new uses is like an A A A well A A is the most light fast A and then B. All these markers except for I think two of them are A rated. The two that are not A rated they're actually A A rated. So they're very light fast, and that's something you normally don't find with so a lot of markers. Most markers, alcohol based especially, they're not like fast. They weren't a type of media that was meant for that. And frankly, uh, I guess they expected you to scan it in, and it was that type of illustrative, cartoon type uh, media. So it wasn't meant to be 
like a fucking hang on the wall and you want the last in museum situations for a long, long time. So, interesting. Oh, this is working out a little bit better. Actually, with the sepia, I like the idea of this. The painting of light hazel on it. Because then you can do the sepia sketches and come back in. That's nice. And let's try something else here. Sepia, I believe. Now this will actually cause your marker and to get higher for a second or two. I'll lay it down. And let's not try to scrub it all up this time. Yeah, I like that. This will work out well. So in this case, if you were just doing a study, you could just use the sepia marker and do your sketch and do various values. This has worked out great. Okay, what do we have here? We have, that's out of order, raw sienna. Here we go, raw sienna. And let's put a line down here. A little bit difference between the two tips, but not that much. Um, let it sit and equalize, and it'll be in good shape. Probably just the way it ended up in shipment. I like the color. Whoops! Didn't clean my tip. Let's try this again. Yeah, that goes into solution quite well. That part. All right. And I can do that along with some tone. Actually, put it on a sepia tone. Hmm. Interesting. This is gonna be fun to play with. Yellow orchid. Another famous, actually more for uh, skin tone. Uh, when you're doing any type of part painting or anything. Uh, let's see how we look here. It looks a bit dark. Uh, let's see here. Alright. Whoops. Let's go ahead and... There we go. Something else here. Mm -hmm. okay. The good news is that that's, I believe, is the replacement that Blake sent me. To my original yellow ochre that was bad. It was so dry and everything. Now this last one is burnt red. Well, now is when you get to see the red is when you start moving the color around and great bleeding it out and mixing it on paper. Look at that. It's, look at the lines almost totally gone. 
So, okay. Very nice. I'm going to have a lot of fun with these. So, there's the swatches. Oh, yeah, I did these lines. The reason why is let's see if they come back and re wet. Well, the gambo seems to do really well. Let's try another one. Try the permanent rose. Not as much, but you still you get some. And was room crimson. Get a little bit more, but it's very similar to the permanent rose. Let's go with the mid blue. And yeah, not hardly any. But more than I expected actually. Very similar to the permanent rose. Let's try the indigo. Oh, that, that, that's reactivating great. Get you, out there. you still get a haze, but that's good to know. And the nice thing is you can lay those down and glaze over them and you don't have to worry that much about lifting it as well. Oh, man. Look at the turquoise, that really went back to into solution quickly. Uh, much like the Gamboas. That one's almost totally gone. Okay. Let's clean it. Let's see what happens here with the halo. Not bad, actually. Still going to have that line. But it's, it's impressive that it is dispersing as much and being able to push the color around as much as I can. Okay, let's try the sepia, and not much movement. Alright, let's try, okay, not much movement there, let's try the Sienna. Almost no movement. Okay. Yellow ochre. A tiny bit of movement. A burnt red. So. Okay. Okay, that's it for swatching the markers. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything that I got from Duke Lick. I've enjoyed playing around with them initially, and I look forward to further experimenting with them. Uh, please join me. I am definitely planning on collecting up some various paper samples uh, to uh, experiment further with these markers. So stay tuned. Uh, please subscribe. That would help me out a lot. And click on the like button. And I'll see you later. Have a good day.